Welcome to Plot Thick. My name is Naive. In this episode, I'm using Blake Snyder's beat sheet to map out the 15 beats in Netflix's new sci-fi comedy, The Atom Project. The Atom Project stars Ryan Reynolds, Walker Scobell, Jennifer Garner, Mark Ruffalo, Zoe Saldana, Katherine Keener, and Alex Maleri Jr. It was directed by Sean Levy. Now, of Blake Snyder's 10 subgenres, this film falls under Golden Fleece. The logline is a time traveling pilot teams up with his younger self and his late dad to come to terms with his past while saving the future. Let's jump right in. Number one, opening image. Let's jump right in. It's 2050. Future Adam, played by Ryan Reynolds, is airborne in a stolen fighter jet. He's tailed and targeted by another fighter jet. A woman commands that he aborts his mission. We'll soon learn this voice is that of Katherine Keener's character, Sorian. Future Adam ignores her command. His aircraft reaches a time-altering wormhole. Number two, theme state. And Kid Adam, who's 12, is being bullied in school and is subsequently suspended. Even things beyond his control affect him directly. Kid Adam's a nerd who uses wit to cope with the loss of his father. At the four minute mark, Adam's mother, played by Jennifer Garner, picks him up from school and tells him that she'll lose her job if she keeps half having to leave to come pick him up from school for fighting. She says, it's going to go on your permanent record. Do you care about your future? The future is coming sooner than you think. That's the theme, Adam's future. Does he care about what happens to his future? This will be explored throughout the film. Number three, setup. Number three, setup. Kid Adam, 12 years old, is the man of the house. His dad is gone. His dad passed away a couple year, uh, almost a couple years ago. His mom is beginning to go on dates and Adam understands. Six and a half minutes in, they have a dog, Golden Retriever, hawking, who hears a strange noise in the backyard. Hawking darts into the woods and Kid Adam chases after him. Eight minutes in. Kid Adam discovers future Adam in his dad's old garage. They question each other. Kid Adam doesn't know the future Adam is him from the future. Future Adam doesn't remember much about his mom's dating life, but Kid Adam helps to jog his memory, okay? Future Adam's been shot and is nursing his wound and now searching for food in the kitchen. Kid Adam is witnessing this and realizes that this stranger knows the property. He's very familiar with the property. And although this strange man is in his house, he's not all that frightened. This man feels and seems familial, okay? But future Adam meant to go back to 2018, not 2022. The question becomes, does Adam care about his future? He has someone to save, but at this point in the story, we don't know who. Future Adam proves to the kid that he's him in the future, recalling detailed events and scars to reassure him that he's telling the truth. Future Adam can't board his jet to leave to go to 2018 and needs kid. Adam's help to get to the year he meant to get to, again, 2018. He says something about it's coded to his DNA, and since future Adam is injured, the jet won't clear him to fly. So he needs kid Adam's DNA. He needs his thumbprint to access the aircraft, okay? Now, incidentally, 
Kid Adam was injured earlier in the day. He got a, no, a bloody nose from fighting off his bullies. Either way, we're at 15 minutes. Number four, catalyst or inciting incident. The inciting incident happens during the setup and is a series of events. Future Adam landing in the wrong year in his parents' garage, meeting his younger self, facing his old bullies, and landing in the wrong time loop. Number five, debate. Future Adam needs rest before figuring out how to leave. Next morning, the Adams go to the pharmacy to get more wound dressing for future Adam's injury. Kid Adam runs into his bullies. Future Adam teaches him to stand up to these bullies, but he gets clobbered anyway. Kid Adam, Kid Adam runs from his bullies, so he's still running away. Future Adam tells Kid Adam, you don't get to be me without getting beat down a lot. Later, Future Adam catches his mom at the local bar. They share a tender moment grieving dad who died in a car crash almost two years earlier. Mom does not know this is Future Adam. He suggests she tell her son that she's still grieving his death so that he knows she doesn't have it all together. It's an it's intentionally ambiguous at this 32 minute mark exactly who future Adam is here to say. It's intentionally ambiguous at this 32 minute mark exactly who future Adam must save. The debate becomes, does he stay in this time loop to save his mom, his dad, or his kid's self, or does he keep with his mission to get back to 2018 to save his wife. Number six, break into two or act two. We meet Sorian in person. She arrives in aircraft deep with her right-hand security, Christos, and an army of robots prepared to return future Adam back to the year 2050. It's the 33-minute mark. Number seven, B story. The Adams are eating at the breakfast table together. Still curious about his future wife, Kid Adam asks how he met Laura. Future Adam tells Kid Adam how he met Laura by accident. Future Adam goes on to reveal why he was time jumping because Laura took a time jump and never returned. Now it's clearer why Future Adam was trying to get back to 2018. He needs to bring his wife, Laura, back. But we know his purpose is bigger than that. Then it's revealed their dad invented time travel by accident and that his partner stole the science. His partner was Sorian. Future Adam thinks Laura may have been killed, so he's got to time jump to 2018 to prevent it from happening. He cares about this part or this portion of his future. We're 35 minutes in. Number eight, fun and games. The robots reach the Adam's house. Future Adam uses a saber to ward them off. Kid Adam watches in amazement. The robots can't touch Kid Adam because obviously he survives this era. Now Sorian arrives in an aircraft in the middle of their yard. She gives Future Adam one last chance to come back to 2050. He refuses. She claims she loves him and Laura like family and that she had nothing to do with Laura's disappearance. Adam doesn't, future Adam doesn't believe her. Just as future Adam is taken into custody, his wife Laura arrives to save him. His wife is Zoe Saldana. They're killing robots together. Sorian boards her jet. We're at the 38 minute mark. Laura and the Adams flee in her awaiting Bronco. Hmm. Sorian follows in her aircraft. We see how time jumping and knowing the future affect other people, innocent bystanders, because Sorian's blasting the road, endangering in, uh, innocent drivers. So Sorian deploys robots on flying hoverboards to capture future Adam, but he ends up killing these robots. We're at the 40 minute mark. 
The Adams and Laura arrive at a remote cabin where she's been staying, trying to figure out why 2018 was so significant so significant to Sorian. Sorian sent her younger self back to 2018 when the Adam Project was launching to give herself intel so that she could become rich off the Adam Project for political gain and financial control of time travel. We're 43 minutes in. Laura tells future Adam that he must correct the time stream, go back to 2018 and prevent time travel from ever being invented. You know what that means. That could mean that he never meets Laura, but it also means that he can prevent his dad from being killed in the car crash and prevent his mother fr from being stricken with grief because his dad died. That's a big dilemma. He begs her to come with him, but she can't. She reminds him that his aircraft is only meshed with his DNA. But he lost her once to time jumping and doesn't want to risk losing her again. If he corrects this time stream, they may never meet. He may never meet the love of his life is what he's thinking. It also means that Sorian won't be able to be greedy, murderous, and an inside trader. So the Adams leave. Meanwhile, Christos and the robot army find Laura's hideout. We're 47 minutes in. The Adams get back to the house where the jet is waiting. Future Adam gives Kid Adam a grim look at their future, but Kid Adam is optimistic and knows there's still hope. Number nine, the midpoint. Back at Laura's hideout, Sorian finds her. Sorian asks where her husband is. She keeps quiet. Sorian shoots her. We're at the midpoint, 52 minutes in. Number 10, bad guys close in. Sorian and her bots are on the hunt. Sorian alerts future Adam that he has one jump left. Will he take this jump to get back to 2018? 2018. We're on campus at an MIT type school. Mark Ruffalo is dad to the Adams and he's lecturing his class. We're at the 56 minute mark. Dad realizes that both the Adams are in his presence and starts to piece together that his Adam project is working. But dad thinks it's unethical to return to the past because it can alter things that are meant to happen or not happen. Dad starts to piece together that the Adam Project was misused. He's reluctant to believe Sorian would betray him for financial gain. So they hide out in a motel, hoping not to be found. Dad regrets his science discovery, tampering with the mechanics of the universe. He admits that to Adam. We're one hour and two minutes in. Number 11, all is lost. <laughs> Dad's leaving to go back home. He tells Kid Adam that he can't know the future because it's not right to know it. Dad leaves the motel. Kid Adam feels abandoned by Dad again. Future Sorian reaches her younger self. They go back and forth about the unethical things they've done to become billionaires and in control of time travel. We're one hour and seven minutes in. Number 12. Dark Knight of the Soul. Back at the motel, the Adams have a heart to heart. Kid Adam explains to Future Adam why he hates Dad so much. Because he died. Future Adam still believes he hates Dad because he puts his work before him. One hour and 20 minutes in. At Dad's house in 2018 with baby Adam, who's eight at this point, and mom, he decides to stay home with his son to spend more time. Time is of the essence. Mom confesses that dad's present when he's there. And she tells him he's got time to make things right between him and baby Adam. But he says, it's later than you think. Interesting. In an earlier scene, he said, you shouldn't know the future. He feels that that is unethical. But now that he knows some of the future, he uses it to his advantage. We're one hour and 12 minutes in. Number 13, break into three. 
or Act 3 break. Meanwhile, the atoms are at the Saurian plant. The atoms split up to attack the robots from two angles. Future Adam fights off the robots with his saber wand, while Kid Adam uses devices remotely. Dad crashes the scene. Future Adam is about to break into the Saurian facility to destroy the accelerator. Dad chastises him about how unethical that is. But he's there because the Adams need his help. We're one hour and 16 minutes in. Number 14, the finale. Dad says, even if the accelerator is destroyed, Saurian will only rebuild the algorithm. So they must destroy the hard drive housing the algorithm. Saurian spacecraft arrives to collect Kid Adam while he's distracted playing with future Adam's VR devices. The Saurians and their bots creep up on Future Adam and Dad while they're removing the hard drive from the nerve center. We're one hour and 20 minutes in. The Saurians use Kid Adam as bait to get the hard drive from Future Adam and Dad. Future Saurian threatens to shoot Kid Adam if Future Adam doesn't hand over the hard drive. That would mean they both die. Future Adam considers it while Kid Adam pleads and the others pressure him to decide. Time is ticking. Kid Adam pushes Future Saurian's hand away and she inadvertently shoots and shatters the electromagnetic seal which alters time. Time begins reversing, sending everyone and everything into a time traveling tailspin. We're one hour and 20 minutes in. While Dad tries to figure out a way to stop the wormhole, Future Adam and Christos battle it out with sabers. They're having a light fight. Kid Adam tries to jump in. Kid Adam jumps in, finally facing his bully, but that doesn't last. He's grounded. We're one hour and 24 minutes in. Future Adam jumps back in. He's getting pummeled. But soon enough, Dad hits some keys on the mainframe that sends Christos propelling out of this time and space. Dad's still struggling to devise a plan to stop and reverse this time warp, but he only makes it worse. He's got to think fast. Again, time is slipping away. The Saurians got their gun back and they're aiming it at Dad and the Adams. Dad refuses to give up the hard drive. He tries to convince her to use her better judgment for the good of mankind. No, she'd rather have the power. Future Saurian admits to killing Future Adam's wife twice to keep power of the program. Time's ticking. They have just one minute before all is lost. Future Saurian blabs about Dad never understanding the bigger picture. She shoots directly at Dad, but the time warp reverses the bullet's trajectory, blasting young Saurian. We're one hour and 26 minutes in. Before she disappears out of this space and time, Dad tells her she never understood the science. The magnetic steel core reversed the bullet's trajectory. Now they've got to book it because the Saurian lab no longer exists in this time and space. They get out just in time. Dad and the two Adams are back at the house. Dad tells them he doesn't have a right to know when he's going to die because nobody has the right to know the future. But he contends that his son is his future. Kid Adam says he needs his dad, but dad says he'll be okay. Look at your future standing right there. We're one hour and 28 minutes in. They take these final moments to play catch, to play baseball catch with each other before the future separates them forever. Hawking goes from a puppy to a big dog. Then we know dad has died. Kid Adam's off suspension and heading to school, but before he goes, he gives mom a big bear hug and tells her he loves her just like future Adam told him to. We believe he'll respect his mother from now on. We're at one hour and 33 minutes. Future Adam is in a lecture, bored, trying to stay awake. Laura comes in and sits next to him. They meet just like he said they would by accident. She's in the wrong lecture hall. The attraction is magnetic. They were always meant to be together.
We're one hour and 35 minutes in. Number 15, final image. Adam offers to walk Laura to the right lecture hall because he's bored from this lecture and he's got time. They found each other just like they knew they would. One hour and 37 minutes in, credits roll. The end. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. I certainly appreciate you. Um, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I plan to upload reviews at least twice a week. Until next time, peace.